this is Scott with Learn to Stop Hunger and today we're going to look at how to use the busy indicator in WPF for long-running tasks. As you can see here I've already launched uh, Microsoft Visual C Sharp 2010 Express and we're going to go ahead and create a new project. I want a WPF application and I will go ahead and call it busy indicator test. We'll click OK. The busy indicator just gives you uh, kind of a progress bar while a long running process is going in the background. So I've got my new project created and I have a blank window here. I want to go ahead and add a button So I'm going to come in here and add it with also a click event, which is when the click occurs, we're going to process this long running process. So there's our button and it says click me. Um, the next thing I'm going to do is there's a separate DLL that is needed for the busy indicator and typically when I add in a DLL that's not a part of the framework I'll create a folder called dependencies and I will add the DLL to that so we've got our dependencies folder ready and what you want to do is open up your web browser and search for extended WPF toolkit can be found at wpftoolkit.codeplex.com and once you get to that page go ahead and download the extended WPF toolkit binaries. I did that and when I did so I opened up the zip file. Let's see if I can get that opened up here there's my zip file and what you want is this exceed.wpf.toolkit.dll so I'm going to go ahead and copy that and then I am going to go ahead and go to my project folder and find that dependencies folder here. Actually I'm in the wrong spot. Alright, this project is let's see, I thought I called it busy indicator test. I did. I'll save it all. I had not yet saved it I guess so now I'm going to come out to the project folder there's my folder I'm going to come in here under dependencies and I'm going to paste my DLL the next thing that you need to do after pasting is you're going to want to look at the properties of the DLL and initially since it's downloaded it's going to be blocked you want to go ahead and click on unblock and apply and then I'll hit OK. And now I am ready to reference the DLL for my project. And that's going to bring in when I reference, actually, I'm sorry, one step ahead there. I want to include it in my project. That's a nice thing to do. Add the existing item. And you want to change this to all files. And add. So I've got it under my dependencies folder there. And now finally, I'm going to add my reference and you would go to the browse tab, go to dependencies and choose that exceed.wpf.toolkit you can see it in your references now and now you're going to have all of those toolkit controls at your fingertips including the busy indicator so once you've got your reference added the next thing that you need to do is to add the appropriate namespace into your XAML I'm going to go ahead and copy this 
and paste it in. There's my namespace, XCTK. Once you've done that, you can start referencing the toolkit controls in your XAML. And I'm going to go ahead and wrap my grid in the, a busy indicator. And the grid is like my root control here. I'm going to put a name on the busy indicator so I can easily manipulate it. We'll call it progress indicator. We'll start it out in a hidden state by saying that is busy is false. And then I'm going to go ahead and grab my whole grid there and remove that, put it inside the busy indicator. I'll save. Okay, after doing that, you want to go ahead and work on your button clicking code. So I'm going to go and view my code here. See, we've got a button click event handler. When you come in here, the first thing that you're going to want to do when they click on the button is to make the busy indicator display by setting the is busy property to true. After that, what I'm going to do is set up a background task and I'm going to simulate a long-running process here by using some sleep statements. Actually, I'm going to have to come back here and do a resolve for the task. Add the proper using statement to system.threading.tasks. And additionally, I want to add a continue with statement. And continue with occurs once your main task is completed. Let's see here. Make sure I've got this right. Actually, I'm going to end my statement there. After this, I'm going to say that my continue with is going to actually occur on the user interface thread. And when I do that, I can do I can modify properties on the user interface. So well it, yeah, the continue with occurs on that same UI thread and so I can modify properties on the user interface and once my task is complete I'm going to set this is busy property back to false again. And then inside my task I'm going to set up a for loop and what it's going to do is every second it's going to update the text on the busy indicator. I'm going to have a sleep statement that will delay the progress here. I have to add a using statement for thread.sleep and that using statement was to system.threading. I'm going to sleep for one second with each pass through this loop. And at the beginning of the loop, I'm going to go ahead and set my busy indicator busy content, which is the text message that's going to appear. 
I'm going to go ahead and paste this code in. What's going to happen here is I'm using Dispatcher so that I can update my busy indicator, busy content property on the UI thread. Since I'm operating on a different thread with my background task, I can ensure that I'm running on the UI thread. But as you can see here, I've got this squiggly line. I'm going to need to go up here and do a resolve and use system.windows.threading. And now I'm setting with each pass of the loop this busy content property, which is our message displayed to the user. It's going to show processing, step, and then the number, which corresponds with the pass through the loop. And that is really all there is to it. Like I said, we've got our basic background task running here. And as it runs, well, before it runs, we show our busy indicator. While it's running, it continues to show. And with each pass, we're updating the message that's displayed to the user. And we sleep for another second before the next pass. We do that 10 times. And when all of that's done, we're going to come down through here and turn our busy indicator off once again. So we'll go ahead and save and give this a trial run. So here's our simple window with a button. I'm going to go ahead and click on the button. When I do, you can see the busy indicator comes up here. It's got an indeterminate indicator. And the step number keeps incrementing as we pass through the loop. And then after 10, it disappears. And so that's pretty much all there is to a basic usage of the busy indicator in WPF. And uh, if you haven't explored the extended toolkit, you may want to take a closer look at that because there are a lot of controls included with it, a lot of options to extend your applications. I definitely recommend that you take a look at it and hopefully you will get some good use out of the busy indicator after watching this video.